home and I need you as the owner of the company to tell me where I should go about this. Okay. So we have a problem with these two frames that are, we're going to be putting together and we can either put it together two ways. Together like this with a screw that goes through here long enough to attach these two frames. Or we could buy this plate which costs five dollars and attach it to the back side and drill a couple holes and drill screws into that to connect these two frames. But since you're the owner and you are in charge of the money, what should I go about this? What would be the cheapest uh, option for this? Our cheapest Project. option would just to be not buy the connector and just okay. drill a straight screw through the side. And how many? What? How much? Oh, how, how many, many frames are we putting yeah, together? Yes. We'll make. We're building a building, so it's going to be a thousands and thousands of these walls getting put together. So, have you consulted with an engineer for this cost estimate? I have not, but I will get an engineer to sign off. Okay. If it is okay to not put this connection and put a screw in here instead. Yeah, okay. Uh, Sal Salvador, you should do that. Okay. okay. Right, give back to me. Welcome to Cheapos. How can I help you? Hello, engineer. I am here for your structural analysis on this framework that I'm building, I'm, a co I'm a, the main contractor there, and we're building a huge building in downtown, and I need you to do your engineering work to figure out which is the best way to connect these two walls together. So option one, this way, with a long screw that goes through the side here, all the way through to connect that wall, or spend the money on this connector, and connect these two walls with this connector with a couple screws on here. Hmm. May I look at these? I'll let you analyze that, sir. On first look, I think you should always go with the cheaper one, hoping your boss would give you a raise or a bonus. But let me look into this. Hmm. Can't find anything on Google, which is usually where I do my engineering work. So I would assume that the cheaper way do them this way, save yourself some money, and if your boss is requiring a recommendation for a couple of Benjamins, I'm willing to write that for you. Hmm, so I'll give you a cut, we'll save money, you win, I win. Of course. And I'll take that to my boss. Mm -hmm. Can I get the letter of recommendation, please? All right, of course. Here goes your wood, and let me type this up, and I'll email it to you. All right? Perfect. You Thank have you. a good day. You too.
Everybody see that? Take a look, hurry. Yeah, I'm stopping it right there. Hmm, so I got this wood specimen tested with the holes on this side and it filled uh, under load a lot less than the blank one with no hole in it. So I'm starting to not trust that cheapos engineering guy. Uh, so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it to another engineering firm and take it so they can uh, give me some advice on how to put those two walls together. Hello, Kayla. Welcome to Mother Teresa's Engineering. How may I help you? My name is Kayla. Hi, Kayla. My name is Salvador. I'm the chief contractor at a huge company, and we're building something downtown. But as per another engineering company, had advised me that it would have no effect if I drilled a screw through the side of this face, and it would have no effect. But when we tested it, it collapsed under a lot less load than our blank sample, our blank sample without a hole in it. So, I want to know, if, does the orientation of that hole matter? Hmm. I think I can see what your problem is here. Let me go do some math real quick. So this value comes from this calculation over here, and this is the compressive strength of your Douglas fir specimen, taking into account 17% moisture. And so, as you can tell, this, its maximum load, this, this is the typical load that this can hold. But if you look at your specimen, the one that failed, you have to subtract an area because this hole, the existence of that hole in the member itself takes away some of that strength. And as you can tell, here's, here's the value, it's significantly lower. And if you look for the third specimen here, here's a new configuration. This area, you're, the area you're, subtract, you're subtracting is smaller and it results in a larger maximum load that you're able to hold. And if you look over here, I'm comparing specimens two and three to your typical cross section. And if you look, the ratio for two and one, it looks, it seems that the second specimen loses about 33% of its strength, and the third specimen loses about 14% of its strength. Hello, Monroe. Oh, hello, Salvador. I am back uh, with the conclusion of the way we are gonna fasten those two walls together. Even though it's gonna cost us money, through consulting a couple engineering firms. One of them was a little shady, so I didn't really trust them. So I went to a second mm -hmm. engineering firm and she was able to calculate and provide facts on which was the bene more beneficial option. Uh, and so we're gonna go with buying each plate uh, to fasten those walls together. Uh, and here's a recommendation from the engineer. Thank you for consulting with those engineers. Uh, I know that you are supposed to get a raise for the cheaper, so I think that you deserve the raise for following your moral and ethics. Thank you, Salvador. Thank you, sir. Glad I didn't listen to that guy. <laughs>